What's up guys, BTBS here with a new tutorial. Today we are going to be playing around with Applied Energistics 2 Auto Crafting Systems. So this is the basics of what we're going to be building and I have here basically everything we're going to need. So um, yeah, let's get going. So uh, any basic ME system, you're going to want a uh, ME controller. We're going to use a creative energy cell to supply the energy to the system. And then to the controller, we're just going to hook up an ME chest. We're going to stick in a storage drive. And then let's just pop a do do do. Uh, yeah, a crafting terminal on top of that. Now we have access, we can put stuff in there. And we'll put a pattern terminal just there. So here we have a basic ME storage system. We have a bit of uh, storage space. Oh, really? 520 bits? Just one of them takes... Wow, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, the basics of the crafting system. We're going to need two lines here. We're going to do one line here and one over here. And on the end of this, we're going to put an interface. I forgot to get one of these. Where are they? That's what it looks like. That's the guy. And we're going to need to hook this with a, uh, a pattern. And the pattern is... No, oh, don't want that one. I want one that hasn't been formatted. So the pattern is how you supply uh, your craftings. And basically we're going to hook up some ME interfaces to this uh, output here. This uh, We're going to hook up some crafting assemblers, or molecular assemblers, to the ME interface and let's make a recipe so if we put that in there and we'll tell it that we want it to craft say birch wood into planks hit yes and then here we have a crafted pattern if you hold shift it displays what the pattern makes and then we're just going to simply put that inside there in the pattern section down the bottom and now we only need one more thing which is our um, our little CPU setup so each CPU setup needs some amount of memory, which comes in the form of a, uh, a storage, a crafting storage block. Uh, these are fairly simple to make, and you can upgrade them. So you have your crafting unit, and then you just put a, uh, a memory uh, storage component in there. And the larger it is, the more crafting operations it can handle at once. You're also going to require, well, no, actually, all you really need is crafting storage, and they have to be in a cuboid shape. Unless it's just one, then it can be in a cube, because it's just a single block. But you see, they can go in a 2 by two, uh, 2 by one but they can't go in a... Uh, they can go in a 3 by one But what I want to do is I'm going to stick this uh, crafting monitor on there, and then I'm going to put a co-processing unit at the back. And now that we have a 2x2x1, uh, two two it's a cuboid again, and we're actually ready to go. It's uh, it's a quite a simple system. So, the co-processing unit allows the crafting to access all five of these at once, instead of just accessing one. And now, all we need to do is choose what we want. So, if we grab some more wood here, uh, we'll just grab a bunch, of, um, a bunch of birch wood. We'll just dump that in there. And then, uh, now that we have the recipe stored in one of these, it is appearing in our terminal as a picture of the uh, the item that it's going to make with a cross. And you can sort by items you actually have, items you can craft, or both. Click on that, choose how many you want, hit next. It then asks you where you want to send it to, because if you have uh, different sets of crafting CPUs, like this is a crafting CPU setup here. If you have two separate setups you can send your crafting operation to one of those or a different one of those. But I'm just going to hit automatic, hit start here and you'll see up here it's counting down how many it's got left to go and even though none of these are upgraded um, they craft quite quickly anyway and because I have the co-processing unit all five of these can be used at the same time and they're all crafting and we have almost crafted a thousand of the wood already so it's actually a fairly simple system once you understand how the blocks interact with each other so all you really need is your ME interface hooked up to some sort of cable, I'm using dense uh, Fluix cable just so I can tell how many channels are being used 
only one channel for that as well, so these don't actually take channels. Uh, you just put an ME interface with the pattern in there, or you could just put the pattern in the molecular assembler, but if, you, if you're going to go, you might as well go all out and just put five of them. And then everything gets crafted, and it gets sent back into your storage system, so we have the wood available to us. So just remember, your, uh, your crafting CPU setup has to contain a crafting storage block, I think it has to contain something else, but I'm not 100% sure. But uh, the more storage, the more crafting storage you have, the more operations can happen at once. The coprocessor allows more molecular assemblers to do the same job at once, and the crafting monitor just gives you a view of what's being crafted at that time. And if you click up here, if you have anything that needs to be crafted, but there isn't any available places for it to be crafted, it'll appear in here, and you can click through and see what you're actually crafting. So that's actually it. It's a fairly simple system. Uh, it can be quite power intensive. So we're using a creative energy cell here, so we don't have to worry about power. But you're not going to want to be running this off of, say, a single dynamo or something like that. So yeah, um, I hope this has helped, guys. I know a couple of you were, uh, were asking for something like this. Um, I'm sure you'll be seeing it coming up in my series uh, sometime soon. And uh, I hope you can go out there and make the most biggest ridiculous crafting systems known to man. Peace out.